The Green Album One of the more slept on Weezer albums in my opinion. Despite once being up there in the ranks, it seems to have since become known as mid, as the kids like to say. I've seen a lot of criticism regarding this album, such as its repetition, its short length, its shallow lyrics. Now, I'm not going to say that these aren't true, even I, the Green Album's biggest defender, agree with these points. Listening to the Green Album, really the only standout songs I can think of are Hashpipe, Island in the Sun, and Old Girlfriend, but even those follow some similar structures to the other songs on Green. Most of the songs are 2 minutes with only 4 of the 10 songs surpassing the 3 minute mark, with one of them just barely hitting it, causing this album to be just short from half an hour, sitting at 28 minutes. And most of the lyrics are just about girls, which goes back to the earlier point about this album being repetitive. I'm not going to deny that these are problems, it can actually be kind of comical how often you find these repetitive things. One thing I noticed when listening through the entire album is that the melodies for the guitar solos use the same melodies as the verse of the song. Every single song follows this except for Hashpipe, which is a bit different from the verse, but still quite similar. Even some of the b-sides from this era have these types of guitar solos. I Do has a guitar solo like this, so does Elisa, Burning Sun, and even some demos for later songs like the demo for Burnt Jam or Dope Nose. It got to a point where I was predicting when the guitar solos were going to happen, and that it was going to be the exact same melody as the verse, and I was right all of these times, except for Hashpipe, which I mentioned earlier. So with all these flaws I mentioned, why do I love this album? Well, I think the best way to describe it is by comparing it to what is widely regarded as one of the greatest films of all time. Star Wars. <laughs> now, I, I know this, this makes me sound like a huge nerd talking about Star Wars in a Weezer video, but ju just hear me out. I know it's weird comparing Star Wars, a movie that's revolutionary for its special effects and world building and all that, to the Green Album, which isn't that revolutionary at all, really. But focusing on the main meat of Star Wars, the best way I can describe it is as just a fun movie. It doesn't have too many serious moments in it and is all around just a fun adventure movie to sit back and enjoy. That's exactly how I feel about the Green Album. You don't take it seriously, you just enjoy the ride. Sure, these songs aren't serious or deep, but a lot of them can be really catchy. So while yes, these problems of repetition do persist throughout the album, and they can be pretty annoying at times, I still find the album pretty enjoyable and fun all around. That doesn't mean I'm not going to discuss these problems with the album, however, as I feel like they still do need to be mentioned and not ignored altogether. With that being said, let's take a look at every single song on this album and see what makes them good, as well as some problems I might find with them. Also, if I say anything that sounds a bit weird, I'm really bad at describing music, so that's why. Man, starting off right with a bang. I love Don't Let Go, it's such a fun and upbeat song. In my opinion, this song's just a perfect opener for the Green Album, as it really sets the tone for how most of the other songs will be like. The first verse of the song is nothing too special in my opinion. That's not saying it's bad, I just don't really have much to comment about it when it comes to this. The pre-course is probably one of the more catchier parts of the album. It's really fun to listen to with the upbeat drums and guitar and whatnot. The only gripe I really have with this part is the emotion in the vocals. I kind of wish there was more emotion put into it because the lyrics sound desperate, like Rivers doesn't want the girl to let go, but the way the vocals are sung, it doesn't really convey that. The chorus is also really great. It's pretty much the intro, but it works well here. Having the great guitar I mentioned earlier, I love the of the chorus. I don't know, they just sound cool. The second pre-chorus is followed by a bridge, which is a really great build-up to the second chorus. It was definitely fitting to add it before the second chorus, because adding it to the first chorus wouldn't really work that well. The guitar solo that follows the chorus is just the guitar version of the verse, as mentioned earlier. Not much to say regarding it. The pre-chorus, bridge, and chorus play one more time, and the song ends. That's pretty much the entirety of Don't Let Go. It's definitely not a bad song, I actually like it quite a lot has a nice upbeat feel to it, and while the vocals and guitar solos could use a bit of work, it's not a bad album opener by any means. If you want it, you can have it. The best way I can describe Photograph is short but sweet. With it being the second shortest song on the album, this song is also really great. I love the opening verse with the clapping, which really sets the song apart from the rest. Similar to Don't Let Go, this song is also really upbeat, which I'm always open to. The drums then kick in as we get to the pre-chorus, which is really awesome. I love how sudden the drums kick in, as it can kind of catch you up by surprise, but it's a pleasant surprise which is always welcome. The second verse follows up really nicely, having drums as well as the clapping from earlier. It's really great. The chorus is also really great. It's not my favorite part of the song, but it's still really great as it follows up to the pre-chorus. Now later in the video you're gonna hear me rant a lot about the guitar solos, but for this song, despite the guitar solo being the verse, I still like the addition of the backing vocals and clapping, as it sets it apart from the later guitar solos. Speaking of the backing vocals, 
The ones here are fantastic. I love the little and I don't know, they just make the song stand out. But yeah, this is another really good song. It has some problems that I'll bring up later, like the guitar solos, but overall it's still really enjoyable. Hashpipe is really good, or at least it's kinda good. I really like the demo for this song. It's really good having these great verses, pre-chorus, and whatnot. But the final version is a bit lacking when it comes to the verse. Don't get me wrong, it's still a really great song, but it's just that there are some things about this that hold it back. The song opens with this really awesome sounding guitar with this very crunchy sound that sets the tone for the song. As I said earlier, the first verse is just not great. Something about it sounds off, I don't know, it sounds like it's one of those mediocre rock bands that are trying too hard to sound cool. I guess that's the best way I could describe it. The way that Rivers does the falsetto at the beginning just doesn't really do it for me. But after the verse, we get to this really great pre-chorus. The drums and guitar are all amped up, and it becomes much more upbeat and much better compared to the verse. Then after that, we get to the second part of the pre-chorus where it goes Which is the best part of the song in my opinion. I love how it builds up to the part at the end. After repeating the structure again with the verse and pre-chorus, we get to the guitar solo, which is my least favorite part of the song. Remember how I said Hashpipe's guitar solo is very similar to his verse? Well, this is the verse, but somehow worse. Something about this part really isn't my cup of tea. Maybe it's the way the guitar sounds, or how it's just the verse, which I already dislike, but I just don't like it very much. After hearing that, you're probably thinking I hate Hashpipe, but no, I actually really love it. It's just that the verse and guitar solo really bring the song down in my opinion, but besides that, everything else about it is really good. I love the main guitar melody, I've already talked about the build-up and the pre-chorus too, so those are also really great. I feel like the demo sounds so much better compared to the final version, as it sounds a lot better and has a much better verse, but that doesn't mean I think the final version is bad at all. It's still a really great song, and even though it's not my favorite song in the album, it's still really good. Island in the Sun is very different from the rest of the Green album, but in a good way. While most of the songs here are more upbeat and hyper, this one is more chill and laid back, which is a nice change of pace. The song starts with this really nice guitar for its opening, but as it goes on, the drums get added and then the bass and rhythm guitar too, which is a really nice build up in my opinion. The first verse is nothing too special, if I'm being honest, but it doesn't really need to be that. It's honestly just really nice and catchy as it is, not much else to really say about it. Then we get to the chorus, which has this great harmonizing from the backing vocals as well as a really nice guitar. I also notice the backing vocals have this really subtle angelic, in quotes, angelic sound to it. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's really nice and adds a lot to this part. We then get to the bridge of the song, which is where it gets a bit louder, but that's not a bad thing at all. Even with a more rockier section, it still feels like it fits with the rest of the song. Again, there's a lot of great harmony with the vocals here too. The guitar solo, like most of the songs on this album, is again, just the verse but with guitar, but it still fits with the song and actually works in its favor here, since I can't really imagine the song with any other melody for its solo. Then we get this beautiful fade out as River says, while the instrumental for the chorus plays. It's really great in my opinion, and it's a great way to end this nice, relaxing song. This song is when most people say the album fell off, but I completely disagree, as Crab is another really great and catchy song. The way I first listened to it was by accidentally pressing the shuffle button on Apple Music and the song played. At first I thought it was okay, but now it's really grown on me. The song has this awesome guitar intro which is really nice and unique and I haven't heard it anywhere else on this album. I don't know how to describe it, you just have to listen to yourself to know what I'm talking about. The verse is the second best part in my opinion, I'll get to my favorite part, but the verse is really great. The backing vocals mirror what Rivers is saying and it's probably the best part about it. I just love how upbeat and fun it sounds. Then we get to my least favorite part of the song. The bridge of the song is... alright. It's pretty much just the intro melody with the vocals, which is okay, but this part just doesn't really do it for me, I like the intro. Which is probably because I like the way the guitar sound in the intro compared to the lyrics, I guess. <laughs> we then get to my favorite part of the song, which is the guitar solo. Like most of the other songs on the album, it shares the same melody as the verse, but I already praised the verse a lot, and combining that with the guitar sound from the intro, which I also liked, gives you a really fantastic solo. I love the backing vocals here too, which makes this already great solo even better. I just kind of wish it was a bit more unique and stood out, instead of just using the same melody as the verse. So yeah, overall, 
The song is really great. Sure, the bridge is just okay in comparison to the rest of the song, and some of the lyrics are a little questionable, but for the most part, it's a really fun and catchy song overall, and it's one that I go back to a lot. Again, another great song. Whenever I listen to Knockdown Drag Out, I think it sounds similar to Don't Let Go, and while it's not true, the first verse does sound a bit similar. The intro begins with this awesome guitar riff as it transitions into the verse. The verse is very heavy on the guitars. My only complaint really is that Rivers doesn't seem to be putting his all into it, as there's barely any emotion in his voice, which would have really added a lot to the song. We then get to the chorus. I don't know if it's a chorus. Genius Lyrics says it's a chorus, and that's a pretty reliable and trustworthy site, so I'll just roll with that. The chorus is really great, having this great guitar as well as the vocals and backing vocal harmony, which is always a treat. We then get to the bridge, which is just the intro melody with lyrics, and it works surprisingly well here. Some of the guitar solos from the intro appear here too, and it really brings the whole thing back full circle. Which leads us to the guitar solo, which is, again, just the verse melody. The guitar itself sounds really great here, but I just wish the melodies were more unique instead of copying the verse. I don't know, a word that gets thrown a lot when talking about this album is potential. And in my opinion, this song is a great example of that. It's got catchy melodies and a lot of great parts to it, but those parts would be much better if they had more uniqueness and emotion to them. Take the verse for example, I said how it sounds heavy, but it would be much better if the vocals matched that heavy emotion. Same goes for the chorus, and the guitar solos, which I really enjoy, could use some more unique things instead of just being the verse but in guitar form. It shows how these songs, while still being really good, aren't really living up to their fullest potential in standing out. But yeah, overall, I think Knockdown Drag Out is a good song. It's just that the repetition of the album is showing a lot here, which can really make it hard to say new things about each song. This song is a really nice change of pace. Unlike the other songs, it's more slower paced while still having a lot of rock elements to it, which I enjoy a lot, as it makes the song more unique and stand out. I will admit, I wasn't a huge fan of it, thinking it was just too slow and it wasn't uh, as upbeat compared to the rest of the album, but after listening to it a few more times, I've grown to love it. The intro of the song is what initially made me dislike the song, with it being a slow melody that I wasn't a big fan of, but after giving it another listen, the intro isn't that bad, and the rest of the song is actually really good too. The intro really helps to set the tone for the rest of the song. The verses lyrics are nothing too special, but the melody sounds pretty great and the guitars are really unique too. It sounds so crunchy and it has this really unique sound I don't think has been heard on the album yet. It's great when this album tries something a bit different. The part where it goes Cause I don't wanna break you find face I can take is again nothing too special, but I think it's a nice transition into the uh chorus. Genius Lyrics, a very reliable source, says it's a post chorus, so I guess I'll go with that. But yeah, the post chorus is my favorite part of the song personally. I really like the vocals here, something about it's oddly mesmerizing in the way they're harmonized. But then we get to the guitar solo, which is like most of the other songs in the album, just the verses melody. I still like it since the guitar solo sounds pretty nice I guess, but again, I wish they did something more with the guitar solos here. It's a shame that the guitar solos aren't as cool as they could be, because I think that there could be some really cool things they could do with it. Something I noticed is that in a lot of the live performances of the Green Album songs, the guitar solos are spiced up a bit to stand out more. It's nothing too special, but certainly better than just having the verse melody. So yeah, Smile is definitely a solid song. It has its problems like with the other songs on the album, but it's a great listen and while you might not like it at first, it'll grow on you. The song's honestly really great. It's got an upbeat intro to start us off, and then we get right into the verse. The lyrics for the most part are kind of mad, just being some variation of But I do like the melody. Not much else to really comment on, it's a pretty simple verse. <laughs> that was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. The chorus is really great too in my opinion. It's similar to Knock Down Drag Out in that it has a lot of emotion, but the vocals don't really highlight that too well. While the melody feels like it would fit emotional vocals, Rivers doesn't seem to be trying too hard with them, which sucks because this part's really great and the vocals are the only thing that's holding it back. After repeating the verse and the chorus, we get to this awesome bridge. It's a fantastic build up to the guitar solo. The bridge again is just the intro melody, same as Crab and Knockdown Drag Out, but the drums and guitar are building up to the solo, which makes this part really good. We even hear the Oh Baby from Photograph Return, which is a nice callback. 
Cause everybody wants some love Give me something I can believe The guitar solo was again nothing too special. Despite having a great build up, it's, you guessed it, the same melody as the verse. Moving on, the outro is probably my favorite part of the song next to the bridge. It's the verse, but this time the backing vocals are singing the verse's lyrics while the lead vocals are singing different lyrics, which I know is an odd way to describe it, but you just gotta listen for yourself to see how great it is. It's really cool. The guitars are also slightly different from the verse, adding even more depth to this outro. Honestly, it's a really fantastic way to end the song, and while it still suffers from the same problems as the other Green Album songs, it's still a really great song overall. Glorious Days is when I began to notice something. These songs can blend together a lot, especially these last three tracks, which are a bit hard to tell apart. Sometimes I get the song confused with Oh Girlfriend, The Next Song, or Simple Pages, which could show how similar these songs can be. It's not that much of a negative for me as I don't mind the repetition all too much, but it's still an issue I thought I should bring up. Anyway, Glorious Days begins with this somber guitar melody. It's a really nice way to transition into the verse. The verse itself is really good. The best way I could describe it is as hopeful, I guess. We then get to the chorus, which is also pretty good. This part does have a similar problems as a lot of the other songs where the melody makes it emotional, but River's vocals don't really show that. It's just a minor complaint as I still really like this part. The chorus pretty much takes the hopefulness in the verse and makes it more grand with the right, right, fight, fight. being my favorite bit from this part. Then the bridge is, you guessed it, the same as the intro melody, which then leads to, you guessed it, a guitar solo with the same melody as the verse. If I sound like a broken record, it's because that's pretty much what all the songs on the album do. It harbors back to the problem with this album being repetitive and having a lot of wasted potential. A lot of these songs have really great melodies and are really catchy and fun to listen to, but I can't help but feel like it's missing that unique emotional touch to it. The vocals don't have too much emotion to them, the structure is very similar from one song to the other, the bridges are just the intros with vocals, and the guitar solos are just the verses without vocals. It's a problem that a lot of these songs have, which honestly really sucks because it's keeping these great songs from standing out. But either way, the song is still really good. I personally like the grand and hopeful feeling of it, it's just that I wish it stood out more as well as most of the songs on the album. Wow, the song is actually really good. It's an actually emotional song about a breakup and the lyrics feel like it's coming from a place of genuine sadness rather than just talking about a girl. Yeah, that that that's gonna get boring really fast. <laughs> the song starts out with an almost romantic sounding guitar, almost as if to signify a relationship, but the intro takes over at the first verse, which shows the heartbreak. The verse is really great, its only weakness really is the vocals, which, like most of the other songs, don't really have that much emotion in them. Which sucks considering the fact that the song is about a breakup and has an emotional melody and instrumental to it. It stinks that the song doesn't show that emotion. The chorus is also really great as it brings out the emotion, or at least it would if the vocals were emotional. They do have a bit of emotion, but I feel like it could definitely be taken up a notch and to fit more with the theme of the song. We then follow the same formula that has been in the rest of the Green Album songs with a bridge that's just the intro and a guitar solo that's just the verse. How fascinating. These parts aren't by any means bad, in fact, the bridge isn't actually that bad, but come on man, we've done this how many times? Nine times for every other song? Can we at least have another guitar solo that isn't just a verse but with guitar? These problems don't really affect this song too much, as I still think it's a fantastic way to end the album, but it's still something that I thought I would bring up, since I wish it wasn't as repetitive following the same structures we've seen over and over again. But besides that complaint, which is really just a complaint I have with the Green Album's repetition overall, it's a really great way to end the album. The emotion the song brings is something else, and you can feel the desperation in the lyrics of the song as these emotional melodies play. It's probably one of the best songs on the album, and it's honestly a shame that it follows the same problems as the rest of the songs. As if it didn't have these, it could really stand out as a hidden gem. Well, more than it already is. Wait, there's more? You're probably wondering. Yes, there's more. Despite Old Girlfriend being the last song on the album, I Do was often included as a bonus track, making it the unofficial 11th track of the album. So what do I think of it? I think it's pretty good. It's a complete departure from the upbeat rock seen in the rest of the album, instead of being a track with only piano, a little bit of guitar, and some of River's vocals. 
The song's lyrics are just the typical Green Album songs being about a girl, but I really like the inclusion of the piano here. The song is really emotional with the piano, and I can't imagine the song without it, as it definitely gives it a more unique touch that was missing from most of Green. The song begins with a guitar intro, which is really slow and soft. It's kind of calming and actually sounds really nice. The song then goes into the verse, which has a lot of nice and calming piano. Honestly, I really like it. Sure, it's not upbeat or anything, but it's still a really nice track to listen to. Then we get to the bridge, which, you guessed it, is just the intro, and then that leads to the guitar solo, which is just the verse. This is the last song I would expect to have a guitar solo, but I guess we gotta stay true to that green album formula. Yay. Yeah, the guitar solo is my least favorite part of this song, in case you couldn't already tell, as it doesn't fit at all into the song which had been entirely piano up until that point, besides the intro. But the intro worked because the guitar had more subtlety and didn't feel out of place, unlike here, but... Yeah, that's... that's... it is what it is, I guess. The song ends with another verse, and it ends with a couple of piano notes before the song finishes. It's a really nice way to end the song, and I really like it. If I were to improve the song, I would personally just get rid of the entire guitar solo and just have a piano solo instead, as it would have fit in line with the rest of the song and not fell out of place. It also would have strayed more from the Green Album formula, making it stand out more than it already does. It's again, a really nice and calming song, and while it's very different from the upbeat tracks on Green, it's still a really good bonus track, and it sucks that it wasn't included, though I could see why, considering how different it is from the rest of the album. But yeah, it's a pretty good song. Also, its inclusion of the song would have gotten the album to over 30 minutes, so that's another thing. Alright, just for fun, I'm gonna rank these songs, which is kinda hard since they all sound similar, and also I like all these songs. So I'll try my best when ranking them, and remember, just because the song's at the bottom of the list doesn't necessarily mean that I hate it, it's just my least favorite of the bunch. As again, I said, I like all these songs, so I don't really hate any of these songs. So, starting at the bottom, we have Knockdown Drag Out, Glorious Days, Hashpipe, I Do, Don't Let Go, Smile, Oh Girlfriend, Simple Pages, Photograph, Island in the Sun, Crab. Oh boy, a lot of people are going to be mad that I put Crab at the top of the list. Okay. The Green Album. It's a really interesting album. As mentioned multiple times throughout the video, I like all the songs on these albums, even with some of the complaints I had. There isn't a single bad song on this album. Even Knockdown Drag Out, which I put at the bottom of the list, is still a really good song and I still enjoy it a lot. It's just that that song really, really shows all the problems I have with the Green Album. These songs, although not the most deep or unique, were still really enjoyable and even if it did sound like I was complaining a bit, it wasn't about the songs themselves, besides Hashpipe, where I ranted about the verse for a little bit, but rather just a problem with the album as a whole, like the vocals not being emotional, the guitar solos being the verse melodies, or the bridges being the intro melodies. These problems persisted throughout the album, but even though some of the songs had these problems, they were still really fun to listen to. I feel like the best way to describe the songs is that they work on their own, separate from the album, but when put all together with the other songs on the album, they begin to sound the same and don't stand out. So yeah, the Green Album is pretty underrated. Sure, it has its flaws, but you should still give a listen. You might not feel any of the emotion or feel any long-lasting impact on it, but it'll still be a fun ride. <laughs>